All right, my next guest kept his record perfect inside of the cage at NEF 44, beating James Plas via unanimous decision. And of course, it is Caleb Austin back on the show. Caleb, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, man. Uh, impressive performance. You, you look dominant in there. Uh, and a fight that I know meant a lot to you and your team to go in there and win. Before we, we dive into all of that and dissect the fight, I do want to ask you, too, just from a mental standpoint going into this fight, how much extra pressure did you feel to go in there and, and not just win, but win decisively after what happened uh, the first go around? Uh, it was definitely like a lift, uh, weight lifted off my shoulders to get that back. Uh, the pressure was like the same as every, any other fight. I wasn't really nervous, but I just knew I had to go out there and just give it my all. How have you grown since that first fight? Because, you know, there was a lot of backlash, not just at you, but at the referee, John English, and just the way that everything played out. Like, how have you grown mentally and, and just matured as a fighter inside and outside of the cage since that first fight with James? Um, you know, things happen. Like, I, in that fight, things happen, and that's not how I wanted it to go. But I just had to keep moving forward, keep pushing past it, and just grow as a person and not not just a fighter. Did you and James have a chance to talk a little bit afterwards? Obviously, it doesn't seem like there was really any bad blood necessarily but between the two of you. You guys are, you know, professional to, to one another, and you handled yourself, with, handled yourself with class. What did you guys talk about afterwards? Um, we, de we talked at weigh-ins uh, before the fight and after. He's a great guy, very nice, respectful. Um, yeah. Uh, after the fight uh, in the cage, he was saying, like, I had a lot of pressure, and I was saying, like, he was winging those kicks at me and did not want to get kicked by one of those. But, yeah, it was definitely a lot of mutual respect for him and the team. I'm friends with another fighter, and Greg is a good coach. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Now, the, the game plan really looked like for you to utilize your wrestling and – Man, that's exactly what you did. You were in a dominant position throughout the majority of the fight. You landed a, a lot of punches. Did you ever feel like there was a chance where maybe you were going to get him out of there? Or did you feel like he's just one of the guys that's really, really tough and you'd have to get him like in an extremely compromised position and just start landing bombs to actually put him out? Yeah, he was, he was really tough. Uh, I thought I was going to get the choke in the second, but he didn't tap. And... That, that was really good of him. I thought I was going to finish him. Game plan was that, but I'll, I'll take the win. Take the decision win. That you didn't get no. The no. A, a lot of times when I watch a fight, I mean, everyone always wants a big knockout or a submission win, but sometimes when you're going against a tough opponent and you go the duration and you're dominant throughout the fight, that's almost equally as impressive because it shows – you know, how good you are, how well-rounded your skill set is. is. Is that kind of the feedback that you got from your team after the fight? Yeah, uh, I came back. Uh, Jesse was very supportive, like, saying, like, that was good. Like, there's nothing wrong with, with the decision. And I, I agree with them. I always, I'll take the win. I'll take the decision no matter what. What did you think of the venue? I, I don't know about you, man, but I had a, a shirt and a suit coat when I first got there, and I felt like I was sitting in a sauna. It was so hot. Oh, yeah. Did you guys feel that? Did that affect you at all? Uh, it didn't really affect us, but when we're we're sit, where all the fighters are sitting there, like during the meeting and like just getting ready to warm up, I was already already warmed up before the warm up. Yeah, yeah you really didn't need to do a whole lot. Uh, as far as just the, um, I guess the venue in general, take the the heat uh, out of it, the the equation here, but just I mean it was pretty cool, like a, a big soccer dome. The, the place was packed. There was a lot of fans there in attendance. What was your overall takeaway from this trip down to Milford, New Hampshire? And, you know, are you hoping that maybe they bring NEF back there at some point? Yeah, the, the venue was amazing. I, I enjoyed it. It was pretty cool, like, looking up and seeing the ceiling, like, that pretty, that high. Uh, I, would, I would definitely fight there again if they had, had it there. Did you get a chance to, to kick back and watch – the rest of the fights after you competed? Like, tell, run me through the rest of your night after you got your hand raised. Uh, after I got my hand raised, I went out, saw my friends and family that I, I'm very thankful that they were there, uh, my teammates. Uh, but then I went and left to get some food because I was starving and came back and enjoyed the rest of the night with all my friends watching all the fights, the good fights. 
So what was the food? What did you get? Uh, got a lot of crackers, uh, pizza, uh, probably, probably non-healthy things. Where's the pizza from? That That's my go-to, man. If I'm going to cheat, it's it's pizza all day. Uh, pizza Hut. Okay. Did you get the stuffed yeah. crust? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, good man. You're smart there. Let, let's talk about camp, man, leading up to this fight, how it's been. I mean, obviously, under Jesse Erickson, seeing BJJ, it's one of the best in the business here. How did you feel? How how was camp? Just run me through everything as you were getting ready for this rematch with James. Uh, camp camp was amazing. You know, I had a lot of good teammates. Uh, they keep pushing me, punching me. You know, keep getting me ready for the fight. Um, the weight cut was was pretty good. The teammates were pushing me for that, making me sweat a lot. Um, not just like physically, but mentally and emotionally too. They're always supporting me. But, yeah, I, I enjoyed the fight camp. It was pretty good. What's that weight cut for, for you like now? Because I was telling you after the fight, man, you're you're built like a like a fire hydrant. You're, you're, you're kind of like a Michael Chandler. Like, you know, you're short, you're you're stocky, but you're, you're all muscle. There's no fat on you. So what is that cut like for you? What's the heaviest you're getting these days? Uh, the heaviest I'm getting these days is probably like 145. That's where I am right now. But the 130, that was that was pretty easy for me. I I could definitely uh, go 125. All right, well that that would be scary for uh, anybody in in that division moving forward. Um, as far as like your life outside of of fighting and training now, what what is that like for you now? Do you do you have a job or are you in school? Uh, tell me what that balance from you know life and training has been like. Well, I have a job and I work at a, a fitness center, so I can lift anytime I want, which is what I enjoy to do on my spare time. So I usually uh, lift in the morning and then go practice in the afternoon. And so you're training almost every day? Yes. And so CMBJJ, that's that's your, your home gym. Are you going anywhere else? Are you getting any sparring or training elsewhere? Or are you just primarily there at CM? Uh, I'm prim- primarily there at CM, but I'm, I'm willing to go anywhere. I have, I have friends that train in other gyms that I would go far with. All right. And you clearly have a bright future, man. Any F45, I imagine, would be next for you. I'm assuming you're going to be competing on that card. Has there been any rumblings, any talks about maybe who you might fight? And an amateur title shot has got to be around the corner, I would imagine, right? Yeah, that's what I'm aiming for right now. But um, like I said, I don't really know any names like i'm not just saying that but like, i'm just not good with names so i don't really know anyone but as long as they put me in there with someone and it's for the for the title i'll, I'll be fine i'm okay with how long do you think you're going to stay amateur like wh- when is the goal to, to turn pro and and make a run at what i'm assuming the, the goal would be the ufc for you yeah absolutely the goal is the ufc i would assume that that's every fighter's dream which is mine um but i'll probably stay in amateurs like four or five more fights to, uh, before i move up to pro so how old are you now uh 22 oh man you're still so young you, you have all the time in the world so yeah no, no need to to rush it w- when you talk to to coach erickson and the guys that are pros that you're training with what do they tell you? Like, where, where are you stacking up right now? Are they telling you, like, if you were to turn pro that you would have success? Or, you know, just tell me where they feel like your your skill set is at, how much you've evolved. Um, I haven't really talked about uh, Coach Erickson about turning pro yet. But he always tell me that uh, I'm good with what I do right now and stick to my roots. And I'll be fine with everything. Can you tell me what makes him such a great coach? Because when I see him cage side cornering his fighters, he just looks so even keel, like nothing rattles him. He's always just kind of cool, calm and collected, you know, and he's clearly a great fighter inside of the cage, most recently beating Josh Harvey. So what is he like to have in your corner and as a coach? Uh, I think he's one of the, the best coaches. Uh, he's more of a friend than a coach because he always he knows how to lighten the mood, take the pressure off. He gets to know you as like a person, like jokes around with you, too. He's not like like a, a stern cold-hearted coach but he always just 
lightens the mood, makes you have fun. So when you're in the gym and you're getting ready for a fight, who have been like the main training partners at CM that you're primarily getting your working with? Uh, Brandon, he fought Nate. And uh, Tyler, he fought on the card. And Hannon, he fought on the card. But uh, we usually do just fight with everyone. But my main person is usually Brandon. Yeah, how's he doing, man? I know that fight didn't go the way that he wanted against Nate. Is this is his confidence level still high? Is he feeling okay? He he's doing good. In practice, he does really good. Yeah, and as far as like right now, like mentally, like have you had a chance to talk to him since that that fight against Nate? I haven't. Yeah, yeah. Well, Nate's clearly a tough guy. No no shame in in, in losing to him there. I'm sure we'll see Brandon back. Uh, here very very soon so you know NEF 45 that's going to be in Portland uh, in November so we're still a little ways out what is the plan up until then man are you just going to keep your, your nose to the grindstone train get better are you planning to to take any trips anywhere I, I know a lot of guys you know like to get outside of the New England area and maybe you know train at a at a bigger gym if possible is that ever something that's been you know crossing your mind at all or are you just kind of happy with where you're at right now doing your day-to-day -day here uh, right now, uh, I'm going to stick to what I'm doing right now, uh, lifting, training, but I'm probably going to go train a few times at like Kaze with Giuliano and James. We were talking about that and Coach Greg, and uh, I'll probably go down to Nostos and train with Nate. Yeah, man. So you'd be getting some some uh, good work in, uh, seems like, wherever you're uh, going to be going. That's That's fantastic. Well, Caleb, listen, man. Congratulations again on the win. A very, very Thank impressive, you. dominant performance. I got one of them medals for you, the Between Rounds Radio medals for the performance of the night. So I'll make sure to send that to you, my man. Uh, before I let you go, I want to give you the floor. Tell people where to follow you on social media. I know you have Instagram. And uh, if there's anyone to thank, the floor is yours. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Caleb underscore Austin 23.2. And I'd like to thank uh, my sponsors, my team for always pushing me coaches friends and family for the support i need and i love all of you guys